folks, welcome to Vector Calculus. Calculus. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to plot parabolas using some key pieces of information. We'll be given, for example, the location of the vertex, the location of the focus, or the equation for the directrix. And using those uh, givens or components, we have to find the equation of the parabola. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of our two examples. Okay, so here's our first example. Our first example tells us that we have uh, the vertex of our, of our uh, parabola at 0 comma 0 also known as the origin and we have the focus of the parabola at 0 comma 2 okay so we have the vertex of the parabola we have the focus of the parabola what we need to find is the actual equation of the parabola so how do we do that how do we do that well the first thing we have to do is determine what type of parabola we have right here right so remember there's four kinds of parabolas you can have a left a right and up or a down parabola and we have to figure out which one of these four types of parabolas our parabola is so the best thing to do in any of these cases is to go ahead and visualize what our parabola uh, what's actually going on with our parabola what is actually going on so let's go ahead and draw the xy plane right here i drew the y-axis quite low because we're dealing uh, with primarily positive coordinates so where is the vertex of our parabola the vertex is at the origin right the vertex is at zero comma zero so here is the vertex of my parabola that right there is the vertex okay at the origin <clears throat> i also know the focus the focus of my parabola and the focus of my parabola is right here at zero comma two that's going to be my focus now what which one of the four types of parabolas would best fit this description it's almost like you're given a description about a criminal and you have to find out which face best represents the criminal here you're given description about a parabola you have to figure out which of the four parabolas best uh, represents the picture of that parabola so if you think about it which one of these four parabolas best fits that description okay is it the left or the right parabola well, it can't be either one because think about it if i draw a left parabola or a right parabola you can see that they don't even contain the focus they don't even have the focus within the cusp of the parabola so we automatically know that our parabola is not left or right so we're left with two more choices right either our parabola is going up or it's going down it's either a smiley face or a frowny face now how do we know which one it is well, it's going to be the one that contains the focus, right? And the only type of parabola here that contains the focus is the up parabola, right? If you draw the up parabola, draw the up parabola. That was a bad drawing, but you can see that it still contains the focus of the actual parabola, right? The focus of the parabola is actually within, within uh, our parabola. Okay, so here's, here's the parabola that we ended up choosing, right? That's the red parabola. And that's the parabola whose equation we want to find out right now. That's the parabola whose equation we hope to find. So, how do we find the uh, equation of this parabola? Well, first, let's write the general equation for any parabola. And what is that general equation? That general equation tells us that x minus h squared is equal to 4p times y minus k. Okay, so that's a lot to unpack here. So let's go ahead and digest some of this. Let's go ahead and digest some of this information. So first of all, h and k, what is h and what is k? Okay, h and k are the x and y coordinates of our vertex, respectively. Okay, so you see the h, you see the k. That's going to be the coordinates of our vertex. Okay, h is going to be the x coordinate of the vertex, k is going to be the y coordinate of the vertex. What about this p over here? Well, this p over here represents the distance from our focus to our vertex. It can also represent the distance from our vertex to the directrix. Okay, uh, both of them are gonna be equal. So that's P right there. P is the distance from our focus to our vertex or from our vertex to our directrix. So do we know any of these key pieces of information? Yes, yes we do. So do we know any key pieces of information? Yes we do. 
we know the vertex of our parabola and what is that vertex it's the origin zero comma zero so what is our h gonna be our h remember our vertex is zero comma zero and that automatically tells us two values it tells us our h value is gonna be zero so our h value is gonna be zero and our k value is gonna be zero our k value is gonna be zero we also know one more value look at the distance from our focus to our vertex right where is our focus our focus our focus is at zero comma two where's our vertex where's our vertex our vertex remember is at zero comma zero and so the distance from our vertex our focus to our vertex ends up being two right just two units our focus is two units away from our vertex okay so we know that our p-value is going to be two and now we just have to plug in right now all we have to do is just plug in so let's go ahead and plug in all the values we have right here under the general equation so i know my h value my h value is what well i just wrote it down it's going to be zero what's my k value that's also going to be zero what's my p value well it's going to be two right and now all i have to do is just go ahead and write down write down the you know general formula so all i have to do is write parentheses x minus zero whole squared is equal to four times two times y minus zero and that right there ladies and gentlemen is the equation of this parabola but uh we can just simplify it a little bit further right x minus zero is just gonna give us x squared is equal to four times two which is just a solid eight, and y minus zero is just y. And so we're left with the final equation of our parabola, x squared is equal to eight y, or you can simplify it further by isolating y, and so y is equal to one eighth of x squared. So before we leave it at that, is this parabola gonna be fat or skinny? That's a good question, right? So let's take a look back at our parabola. Look at, take a look back at our parabola, and think about y equals x squared. If I just had y equals x squared, how would that look like? So this right here is gonna be, this right here is gonna be y equals x squared, right? That's gonna be the standard, standard graph, y equals x squared. Now how will y equals 1 eighth of x squared look like? Well, 1 eighth of x squared is gonna mean what? Is it, is it shrinking or is it getting fatter? Well, it's actually gonna get fatter, right? One eighth of x squared, uh, contrary to popular belief, is gonna get fatter. So it's gonna be all the way like a, it's gonna almost be like a disc, almost like a very fat marble disc. So that green right there, uh, not the best representation, but that right there is gonna be one eighth x squared. Uh, hopefully you will see that it's fatter than the original x squared. Okay, let's look at our next example. So our next example, we're not gonna be given the focus. We're still gonna be given a vertex, but this time we're gonna have a different piece of information given to us. Let's see if we can still find out what the equation of our parabola has to be, okay? So let's go ahead and write down what our givens are. This time, our vertex is gonna be not at the origin, but at a different point. Let's see if we can kind of adjust to that. And our y coordinate of the vertex is gonna be four. And we're going to also be given the directrix, directrix uh, of, our, of our parabola. And that's going to be y equals 7. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our, uh, our kind of common sense check. And that check is, is the parabola left, right, up, or down? Which one of these four is the parabola? Well, once again, to answer that question, we have to go back. We have to go back at the xy axis right uh at the coordinate plane so think wh where is this point right that point let's go ahead and draw the xy axis like that and where is negative two comma four negative two comma four negative two comma four is going to be where it's going to be right around here right minus two comma four that's my vertex minus two comma four okay and where's my directrix it's at y equals seven so it's going to be a kind of horizontal line above my blue point. So it's gonna be right over here, imagine. So that right here, that right here is my directrix, y equals seven. This is my directrix, so let's go ahead and write that down, directrix. And maybe we can make it straighter. 
So this over here is going to be my directrix. And in blue, I have my vertex. Okay, in blue, I have the vertex of my parabola. The vertex. And what's the location of my vertex? Well, it's going to be minus 2, minus 2, comma 4, minus 2, comma 4. Now, we have to think which one of the four possible types of parabolas best fits this description, right? Is it going to be the up parabola? Well, think about it. If you have an up parabola, it's going to kind of intersect the directrix, right? If I, um, let me see if I can do it in a kind of muted color so we don't have to uh, erase it. So if I, uh, if I do the up parabola, look what happens. Uh, the up parabola has to pass through this vertex. So look at that. And check that out. That it intersects, it crosses the directrix. And that's definitely not allowed. So the up parabola is not an option. What about the left parabola? Well, if we look at the left parabola, it doesn't even, it doesn't even match up with the directrix, right? It's not even the axis of symmetry. Look at the axis of symmetry of this thing. Is it perpendicular to the directrix? No. No, it's not. The axis of symmetry is right here, parallel. Parallel to the directrix. And finally, finally, what about the right? The right parabola. Well, even the right parabola doesn't work for the same reason. Again, look at the axis of symmetry of this parabola. Look at the axis of symmetry. It's not perpendicular to the directrix. And so we're left, we're left with only one valuable choice. And what is that choice? It's going to be the down parabola, right? Look at the down parabola. Look at the down parabola. It's not only is its axis of symmetry perpendicular to the directrix, right? Not only is its axis of symmetry perpendicular to the directrix, but, 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 it also, it also doesn't intersect the directrix. Okay, so that's how we know that our parabola is going to be downwards facing like that. Okay, so now we're actually going to find the equation of our downwards facing parabola. And once again, the equation for a vertical parabola is going to be x minus h whole squared is equal to 4p times y minus k. Now, do we know any of this information yet? Yes, we do. We know the vertex, right? Look at, the, look at this vertex right here. It immediately gives us two pieces of information. What is minus 2? That's going to be the x coordinate of my vertex, otherwise known as h. What is 4? That's going to be the y coordinate of, of my vertex, also known as k. And so h comma k, that right there, we're already, we already know two of our variables. h is going to be minus 2 and k is going to be 4. What about uh, our last variable that we need to know, p? Do we know what p is? And yes, we do. Just look at the distance. Look at this distance from my directrix to my vertex. y equals 7 is here, and y equals 4 is where my vertex is. So the distance between my vertex and my directrix is just going to be 7 minus 4, or 3. So my p value is simply going to be 3. And now I, all I have to do is just fill in the gaps, right? So I'm going to have x minus negative 2 squared is equal to 4 times 3 times y minus 4. And now all I have to do is simplify. x minus minus 2 is just x plus 2 whole squared. 4 times 3 is going to give me 12 times y minus 4. And so what am I left with? What am I left with? But the final equation for my parabola, which is x plus 2 whole squared, is equal to 12 times y minus 4. But... But, but, but remember that we want a downwards facing parabola. This is not a downwards facing parabola. To make it downwards facing, I've got to include a little something, and that's a minus sign right there. And now, finally, we have a downwards facing parabola that doesn't intersect our directrix, whose axis of symmetry is perpendicular to our directrix. And that, folks, is going to be the equation of this parabola. Thanks for watching, and we'll check you out in the next episode of Vector Calculus.